Hi, fairy grasshoppers. Hey, it's nice to see you. Hi. Let's talk about some energy. Let's talk about energy. It's been kind of a potent week energetically. We had a full moon, lunar eclipse energy earlier in the week. Full moon's often about clearing or clarity. It pushes like the energy out that you don't need anymore and it opens you up to the new. <clears throat> Hello, throat chakra. Let's have a sip of water. <laughs> <clears throat> Woo! Did you hear that? Clearing, clearing. I know it doesn't sound the best on video, but hey. That's how it is. You guys, you, are you clearing your throat chakra this week? Maybe you are. Maybe that's what's coming forward is the throat. Having a voice, speaking your truth. Mm -hmm. Letting your communication flow. Mm -hmm. Not just externally, outward, but internally. Ah, that's kind of a powerful message. So the lunar eclipse or the energy of the, let's, let's talk about the full moon a little bit. It can be mean a lot of different things. Sometimes there's themes and you can Google that or look up on YouTube. There's probably some great astrologers that have talked about the, this particular moon. Um, I don't follow astrology myself. I don't practice it. Like I don't, like I haven't learned about it or that kind of thing. I think it's interesting and I think it's very, a very good tool to help you understand energy. And that's what things are all about right now. Our, our best communication, our, our biggest asset, our greatest untapped renewable resource is our inner energy. And so that's why I've been talking a lot on Fairy Grasshopper about empaths and sensitive people and feeling that clairsentient channel, which is the sensory energy of the feeling, which collectively we have a lot of right now. Um, it's just really obvious and people are talking about it like it's normal. Empath, 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 that word is being thrown around a lot. We're also talking about other energy terms like the word trauma and that's coming out and getting thrown around a lot, a lot, a lot. If you want to learn more about that, check out Dr. Bruce Perry's work. And that's what I would encourage you to read about or like the body keeps the score book. And there's a lot of other information about trauma or trauma informed care and perspectives to understand what your natural response is in your body and your energy and how it's working so that you can manage it a bit bit easier than if you have information and you have awareness, then you can use those two things, information and awareness, to make different choices for yourself. So that's the whole point of energy is to understand that it's always flowing, it's very dynamic, it's different and diverse within you as well. Stop trying to think about external energies in you. So how does the moon energy that is external affect you? Well, especially for the divine feminine energies, because the moon is a lunar energy, often connected to lunar goddesses, an energy of divine feminine. It helps to even control or guide the the water or the oceans and the tides, doesn't it? It really has an impact or an influence and it reflects onto the human plane or onto our earthly experience in that regard. It helps to create a rhythm. The moon is very predictable, although it's mysterious, especially during the full moon cycle, it's very visible. So you are seen, it sees you. It even sees parts of us that we don't wanna see or parts of us that maybe we don't realize our own truth. Like what really is true about this situation? Is this just me and an old pattern that I've just accepted as a truth? And really it's maybe not true, or maybe it's not true anymore. Like maybe it's not true anymore. anymore. And I, I will use this analogy that I stopped um, pinning my pants, like I'm gonna date myself, but in back in the day, it was cool to not only roll your pants or cuff them, but to pin them with safety pins all the way up the inside of your leg. Yeah, crazy. I have no idea where that came from. Nice tight like leg, bottom leg, and then you would, if you were really cool, you'd pin them and then you'd roll them. So that is really not the safety pin thing, really is not a style anymore. And so that is an old pattern, an old trend. So maybe patterns or beliefs are a form of energy trending. Ah, interesting. Maybe we can use trend as a term that we can start, just like empath and trauma. Let's use the word trend instead of old patterns, old belief systems, because that makes the brain go, yeah, yeah, whatever, I'm not going to listen. But if we go, hey, brain, you got to be trendy. You got to keep relevant. The brain will go, oh, oh, I need to be important. Yes, okay, I get it. You need to be important because you need to be seen because I want you to be visible because I think you're awesome. Like that's what your brain says. But then it says, but wait a minute, we don't only want certain people to see you. So let's not get too big. Don't be too bright. Don't be too light. Don't let your energy get too powerful. You know, there's kind of a balance there that happens with the brain. 
So with the energy of the moon cycles, it gives you this perspective, this opportunity to really reflect. And that bright moon energy like shines on you like a spotlight, baby. And it can really help you to release. It can give you clarity. It can make you crabby and impact your moods. It can also give you lots of energy or frantic energy or you might want to repaint the living room or that kind of thing. I mean, it has a lot of different vibrations or frequencies that you connect to depending upon where you're at inside and it influences you inside and it meets you this external beautiful cosmic energy of the lunar lunar moon the cycles that she predictably has for us gives us opportunity to work with our inside energies as well so it's a reflection of what's inside for us to get get use some of that energy right she's like a guide a spirit guide in a way so that full moon this week yeah, moons are also individual and unique in their characteristics as well. So like this moon might have had a specific purpose in addition to just clearing or clarity, just clearing or clarity. Sometimes full moons are quiet and calm and peaceful, which is beautiful. Love that and uneventful. That's great. doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. It just means you're in a resting spot. It means you're in an integration spot. You don't need that big poof kick in the pants or that boost of energy to do something or that distraction energy to get you off of something that you are focusing on and spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning that doesn't help you. Sometimes a full moon energy boosts you right into a different place so that you can move on kicks you in the pants to get you off that topic and into something else where you can actually make a difference <laughs> and make an influence and feel good, be influenced, you know, in a positive, healthy and hopeful way. So that's the full moon energy. Now, here we are retrograde. What does that mean? So this is again, an astrology thing, understanding planets and your birth charts and all that. And again, you can Google that and look up information about that if you're curious about astrology. I don't actually have any really good BFFs that are astrologers. I don't. I don't have other psychics that I work with. Well, I have one that I, I, she would never say that she's an astrologer at all, but she, that has some, like, pre, is pretty well versed in astrology, but she doesn't want to just work in astrology. So, um, yeah, so I have one, but that's about it. So I don't have a lot of, it's not like constant part of my conversations or whatever, like my sign, what's your sign? Like sometimes I'll be in session with somebody and they'll go, oh, well, I'm a so-and-so, so you know what that means. I'm like, no, what does that mean? That's just another label, my friends. It's just another label, like age is a label, like gender is a label, like ethnicity is a label, like, like how you identify or how you align. All these things, it's just ways to categorize or to find what's similar about us or what's different about it, what's different about us as well, like, right, to put us kind of in different groupings, right, to organize things. And I don't, when I say label, I don't necessarily mean negative, just to be clear on that, I got to be clear on that because that's not what I mean. That's not my inference by it. It's like an organizational structure, whatever, however that feels or turns out for you. So I don't really, I'm an Aquarius myself, but I'm like, oh, okay. Um, so a, a retrograde scenario can mean a lot of different things. Like for me, okay, so here's some common things that people talk about regarding retrogrades, like challenging communication, which I just cleared my throat. So maybe it is a throat chakra time, you guys. That's actually a very real, tangible thing. In fact, this week when I have, I have a small group that I work with called Divine Woman. And during our channeling, that's what came in was throat chakra energy. And it was about that, about communication. And, and I've seen that a couple of times in recent sessions in the last two weeks. So it's a pattern, I think, a collective or communal pattern. So it might be because we're entering a retrograde. That would make sense. That actually, hello, thank you, brain, makes sense, right? So in a retrograde communication. So that means there can be misunderstandings in communication. Um, there can be assumptions that are made that you, expectations that are, are had that are not actually verbalized or communicated or agreed upon. So contracts can be a bit of a, um, something to be aware of. And not to be afraid though, this information, energetic information isn't about fear. It's not supposed to be controlling your patterns based on fear, it's about information and awareness. Remember I said that? Information and awareness, data. It's just data, it's just data, you guys, just data. So when I say contracts, communication, it's just data. It's information to kind of be aware of so that if your intuition is going, oh, no, it's not a good time to buy that car, or it's not a good time to sell our house, or 
mm, not sure about X, Y, or Z, etc., then listen to your inner voice. Your inner voice, hello throat chakra, your solar plexus and your spirit working together, okay? That's what it means, that's what it means. But um, electronics can be tricky because of all the extra cosmic energy and connection. For me personally, you guys, I don't know that I'm a, I notice that too much because like technology and stuff, because I screw that up a lot. Ask my husband. In fact, I'm, I burn through phones. I burn through computers. I have a three-year-old computer that should be great, fabulous, awesome. It's like, you know, the, the limousine or the Cadillac version. And um, already it, it needs, I need to get a new one right now. We're just looking at a new one. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't want to spend, so, I mean, to invest so much money in the computer that I need is kind of, oh crap. But because I know that like, so a purchase, <laughs> money, hello, we might as well just talk about that. Hello, money coming in. During retrograde times, it can be, um, it can pa cause us to pause on um, making an investment or a purchase or something for a, a change. However, I have to tell you this. Retrogrades are not to um, amplify doubt, they're to clear it. That's how I feel psychically. That's what my team tells me. So I see orange, um, that sacral chakra, that's divine feminine. I'm doing a little bit of a channeling with one of my spirit guides. You can kind of feel that right now. And she's talking about, or giving me this, this feeling about information, data, data, about how this energy during this time is much more of a advocacy advocation advocation not abdication not letting go um, an advocacy for what is right and true for you in your alignment and what isn't so it's it's forcing you to kind of lean more into what the truth is, is of, of what you want like if i wanted if i just wanted a new computer or i just wanted a new car what is it about that new car that is hitting at some of my desires because it has to be more connected to the desires and the pros category than the fears of the cons. Like if I was getting a new car because I was afraid I was gonna get stranded somewhere because I didn't trust my car, that's a whole host of issues, isn't it? Oh my goodness. And then during this cosmic, electrically charged, static time of retrograde, those fears are gonna be amplified, which then I could actually manifest that experience. I don't feel like that, because I know you guys that watch me, you know that I got Betty, my psychic minivan, and I love my Betty, I love her. She's totally supportive, she's there for me, she's, she's like the moon man, she's cyclical, and she's, I know what to expect, which is so interesting when I say that, because I know some of you are like the moon, you know what to expect, I'm like, yes, get to know your energy, get to understand the relationship, the truth, Communicate connection, communication and connection of what that relationship means. So during the retrograde, if I purchase that vehicle because I'm really drawn to it, like I see something, this sweet little beautiful car that's like, oh, halo over it and it just feels good. And the person that is selling it or showing it to me has this kind of sparkle and it just, like there's just something that feels good. There's this momentum, natural organic momentum about it. That's the universe and the retrograde energy shifting around to get rid of the fears about it or the limitations about the spending the money and, oh my gosh, you don't deserve it and self-doubt and is this a good time? And I've heard a lot about the higher prices and da 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 da, da. I'm afraid for the future, so I gotta do it now. That's not, no, 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 no. The organic, natural flow and motivation of energy that is connected to that which is positive, helpful, and hopeful for you, that then will inspire the purchase. So you can make purchases. You can buy a house right now. You can do all that as long as it's in alignment. And retrograde shows you what's not in alignment. If you're doing too much, hurry, 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 get something done, you're going to have technology problems. You're going to. And if there's any kind of breakdowns in your systems, it's because you didn't invest in earlier on, plan for what you actually really needed. And likelihood is, is your solar plexus, your intuition has been telling you that, has been trying to voice that to you, and you didn't want to hear it, you didn't want to hear it, you didn't want to hear it. It just seemed like one more thing that you had to do. There's a lot of perspective that can come with Mercury retrograde. Don't be afraid of it. And actually, right now for me, it feels like 
And for a couple of my clients that I've talked to recently about this, I actually had a conversation with one of my clients about it. It feels like an integration time to me. It feels like a coming together time, not a separating. Like the full moon, shoo, shoo, clear, clear, clear. And the ending of a cycle, ending of spring, going into the summertime energetically and seasonally for me here where I live. And there is a lot of endings and moving forward as fresh and ready for what's next, optimistic about the adventure, open to learning new things, willing to accept and receive help from the universe. The retrograde is going to help with some of these things if you allow it to, if you don't consider it a big jerk and ignore it and amplify the negative or the need for dramatic change. If you need dramatic change, honey, you're gonna get dramatic change. But that's for all your relationships, not just this one. You probably do that in all your relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, I know. Sometimes it can just go to that place, right? But the retrograde can help you with integration too. Just to, to float in the natural organic flow and the rhythm of whatever the cycle is for you. So astrologers and psychics and well-intended life coaches can give you all sorts of information like I've been spewing this information all to you. And the point is, and in sharing my perspectives and my feelings about it and how it affects me and what I understand, it's just a place to start. We are not you. So there's never a one size fits all. There's just some information, data, right? Data. And then awareness now for you, awareness. And so then the third piece is the feeling yourself, your intuition as to what is in alignment for you. That's your practice. That's your homework. That's you, you navigating, you managing, you working with the energy, not fighting against the currency of the energy. So this is Bridget. Thanks so much for watching Fairy Grasshopper on YouTube. I'm so glad you're here to enjoy the vlogs I share, the cool psychic tools I share, the interesting channeling conversations I have with like, you know, deities, saints, guides, and archangels here. So I'm glad you guys enjoy, enjoy it here as well. All right. So don't worry. Don't freak out. Just be in alignment. Data information. Okay, data information and awareness. And just use those two things. Simple as that. All right, take care.